This video is going to be an updated road signs video. So I'm going to go through pretty much all the road signs you need to know for your theory test and for your driving test. Now I have done a video on this back in 2018 um, where I covered the majority of the road signs you'll find on the Irish roads and that's still very relevant. It's still very good going forward but this one is going to be even better because it's more up to date and I'm going to have a few road signs in this that I haven't had on previous videos. Now before we start I just want to mention that I have joined the TikTok revolution so if you would like to check out my TikTok channel I'll leave links in the description and in the first pinned comment. I'm hoping to do a different style of video over there so check it out if you wish. In the meantime let's get on with the video. Okay we're going to start off here with some um, warning signs. Now um, just in case you're watching this in silence and you don't want any sound on, I will have subtitles um, along the bottom here. You have to switch on your subtitles, of course, or CC as it's known. Um, I'll also have a little graphic or an explanation over here as well, just for your own convenience, okay? Okay, so let's get on with it then. These are warning signs. Number one here is a crossroad. Number two is a side road up ahead. The road looks a little bit less thick. The black looks a little bit less thick. So a side road with a road of lesser importance to the left, uh, like a left turn up ahead. Number three is a T-junction. Uh, this road here looks a little bit thicker. So the main road or the more important road is here on the right of the T-junction. So T-junction ahead for number three. Number four, Y-junction ahead with the main road going off to the left and a more minor road here on the right. That's a Y junction. Number five up here then is a staggered junction. So it just means there's a left turn up ahead followed by a right turn up ahead. Uh, the left and right turn are of lesser importance because the black line is slightly less thick than this um, vertical line here. Okay, that's number five. Number six, crossroads ahead with roads of equal importance. Number seven, a side road up ahead to the left, roads of equal importance. Number eight there is a T-junction with road of equal importance up ahead. Number nine is a Y-junction with roads of equal importance going left or right by the looks of it. And number 10 here is a staggered crossroads with roads of equal importance to the left and to the right up ahead. Okay, still on warning signs. Number one here, crossroads ahead with a more major road going from left to right here, okay? So you're coming up and then this, you're going to meet a main road here. So crossroads ahead. Uh, number two here is T-junction ahead with road of more importance here um, up ahead, the horizontal line. Ticker line means of more importance. So crossroads, T-junction. Number three is also a crossroads, but it means you're meeting a dual carriageway. That's why there's two black lines there. So crossroads ahead with a dual carriageway going from left to right. Similarly, this is a T-junction ahead but you're going to be meeting a dual carriageway. So the dual carriageway is going from left to right here up ahead. Number five then is merging traffic. So traffic is going to be merging from the left here um, in number five. Number six um, is merging and diverging traffic. So you're going to have merging traffic and then almost straight away, you're going to have a road diverging off to the left. Okay, so merging, diverging traffic, number six. Number seven is a roundabout. That's like a normal, regular roundabout. Number eight is a mini roundabout, okay? Small mini roundabout. And number nine then is a loop road. These are the type of roads you might see on flyovers at busier, more complex junctions in and around motorways to help traffic navigate properly. So it's like a long, gradual, circular road. It feels like you're turning the wheel like left or right for a long time, depending on where it's going, okay? So that's a loop road normally found at motorways or flyovers, okay? Okay, on this page, number one here, we have a dangerous corner ahead. Look at the angle here. Look how sharp it is. Dangerous corner. Don't get it confused with number two here, which is a dangerous bend ahead. It looks more gradual, okay? So dangerous corner, dangerous bend. Number three, series of dangerous corners up ahead, okay? Number four, a series or a number of dangerous bends up ahead. Up to number five here, we also have series of dangerous corners here and series of dangerous bends but just watch out you might have you might be accompanied by a sign like for um the duration of five kilometers up ahead moving on to number seven so this is basically a two plus one road so you have one lane going this way and you have two oncoming lanes okay so the two plus one and the two is coming against you and you're the one lane going forward all right number eight this means um, a warning sign to cyclists. Uh, watch out, slippery surface for cyclists. So 
it also doubles up as meaning there could be tram tracks ahead as well so uh, the reason it's going to be slippy for cyclists is because of the likelihood of trams ahead so no harm mentioning that number nine means the start of the passing or the climbing lane okay um like a, like a slow lane for for slower vehicles and number 10 here as well is similar start of the climbing lane or passing lane which just highlights the fact that there's a one oncoming lane so it's like a two plus one in your favor this time if you know what i mean um so start of passing or climbing lane here with an oncoming lane um down to number 11 then 11a these are chevron boards to the right so follow the directions to the right it is also likely to be indicating that there's a dangerous bend or a dangerous corner ahead to the right and then 11b follow the signs here follow the sign chevron signs to the left also indicating it could be a dangerous bend or a corner to the left okay so dangerous bend or corner to the right here dangerous bend or corner to the left here with these chevron markings okay let's move on to this section of warning signs here number one um road narrows from one side road narrows from the left okay road narrows here on sign number two from both sides okay so the road narrows from both sides number three means division in the road up ahead uh, so we drive on the left so we're meeting the division or obstruction and the oncoming cars are just finishing with it okay so number three is road divides up ahead um, number four end of dual carriageway um, number four end of dual carriageway number five two-way street or two-way road up ahead number six means a sharp descent or a steep downhill up ahead and if you see the car pointing the other way it means a steep uphill up ahead number seven then is a lane loss so you're about to lose a lane up ahead you might see these at the end of a two plus one road do you remember there a few moments ago we had uh, two plus one roads where you might have two lanes um, that you're driving in and then you might have um, one oncoming lane so you might see this at the end of a two plus one road okay number eight means a speed bump or a humpback bridge up ahead number nine is a dip in the road up ahead and number 10 then is a series of bumps or hollows on the road up ahead so on these warning signs number one um, watch out for overhead electric cables number two is also watch out for overhead electric cables and it gives the safe height that is there as well number three is restricted headroom so again it mentions the height that is safe to work under here and then the barrier down here as well with the accompanying sign uh, similarly um so that was number four number five then is a level crossing but it's not guarded by lights or barriers number six is a level crossing and this is guarded by a gate or barriers and number seven then is a level crossing which is guarded by lights and also lifting barriers as well and sometimes you might have this accompanying sign here warning you of trams or a tram lane ahead okay number 10 here then um we have a warning sign for trams so just watch out you're in an area where trams could be coming on the left or the right um number 12 down here is just warning you to look both ways look both ways because trams could be coming both ways and number eight and nine then are more warning signs there just to watch out for um an automatic level crossing and then to stop when the red lights show now on this series of warning signs we have number one here um watch out for a pedestrian crossing up ahead and this is particularly in reference to an uncontrolled zebra crossing um where the visibility might be slightly impaired for the driver so this is to highlight the fact that there's an uncontrolled uh, zebra crossing or pedestrian crossing up ahead and sometimes you might see little black and white stripes just in this area here to highlight that it's a zebra crossing up ahead number two is uh generally it means school ahead so watch out for school children crossing or school children on the road but this could also be used um in and around parks or maybe playgrounds that could be associated with schools as well okay so watch out school ahead possibility of school children crossing uh, similarly this means watch out for uh, a school ahead and school children crossing these twin amber lights are normally meant to be flashing when the school warden is out directing traffic or when a junior school warden is out stopping traffic so that the children can safely cross um so they just help to highlight the fact that there's a school ahead and possibly children crossing number four then is similar to the school ones but it's it's not exactly the same this is to watch out um for children playing 
or children that might be suddenly crossing the road. And this sign is more likely to be seen outside of schools, so probably more on a rural road maybe, or in a housing estate. Yeah, so watch out for children playing or crossing. Number five then, watch out for horses on the road, horseback riders. Number six is to watch out for cows, cattle on the road, or other farm animals. Number seven is a sign warning you that there could be sheep up ahead. And number eight, watch out for deer or other wild animals up ahead that could be crossing the road, particularly at night. On this page, number one is warning you of traffic lights up ahead. Number two is warning you of an unguarded quay, canal or riverside up ahead. Number three is warning you of a slippery road up ahead. Now, it's not telling you that the road is slippy all the time. It's just saying that there's an increased likelihood of slippery surface for cars possibly due to overhanging trees and maybe in winter there might be more likelihood of uh, black ice on the road or something like that okay so it's just a warning of the possibility that it's more likely to cause a uh, slippery surface for cars number four is warning you of a tunnel up ahead okay number five it means if there's a danger of falling rocks or falling stones um, but not just that, that there could be, they could actually be falling or they could already be on the road. So watch out for that one. Number six then is warning you about the danger of crosswinds. And number seven, watch out for low flying aircraft. So now we're on to more regulatory signs. Number one is a stop sign. So you have to stop fully. Number two is also a stop sign, but this is not the sign that you'd see at junctions or at roundabouts. This is the sign that the school warden will hold up to stop traffic so that children can cross the road at or near a school. Number three and four mean yield. So number three is the Irish version, Gael Schley. Number four then is yield. So yield to traffic on the right or traffic on the major road. Number five means no entry. No, you can't go straight ahead like. Number six means no right turn. Number seven means no U-turn. Now this is usually found around main roads like national roads or dual carriageways. Um, that's where you'll typically see that sign, but not exclusively, okay? So number seven, no U-turn. Number eight, no left turn. And then number nine, uh, no overtaking. And often you'll see the distance um, up ahead. So no overtaking for 200 meters here, for example. So here then, number one, two, three, four, five here. These are just speed limit signs, okay? So the maximum speed is 50, 30, and so on. The 31 here is normally in residential or built up areas like a housing estate, for example. Um, that's one to five. Number six here then, this is saying that parking is available during the time shown here. And uh, number seven is just an information plate in relation to disc parking. Number eight is specifying that no parking is allowed. And normally you'll have an information plate underneath it to um, indicate the times that it's not allowed. Um, number nine here is a clear way, no parking or stopping during the times shown on the accompanying sign. Okay, that's a clear way. Uh, number 10 is a taxi rank, so only taxis can uh, park or stop there during the appointed times. Um, number 11 is a pedestrianized street, so a street for only pedestrians to walk on, no cars. And very often you'll have information plates like this. Um, either beside it or more likely underneath it to be honest with you uh, pedestrian street number 12 here is no entry no entry to vehicles and number 13 over here is a special rural speed limit sign this is saying here number 13 that the speed limit is 80 kilometers but don't treat it like a target drive in a way that's responsible and drive in a way that reflects the conditions taking into account any bends bumps or uneven road surface things like that so here then we have a height restriction, we have a width restriction, we have a weight restriction here, number three. And similarly, number four, we have a, a weight restriction, so no access here for vehicles uh, four tons or over. Number five, similarly, a weight restriction. Number six, again, we have a height restriction here. Number seven here then gives an alternative route for heavy vehicles. So it's basically saying that heavy vehicles are not allowed to go this way. They have to go straight. Um, number eight then means no parking here for uh, heavy goods vehicles. And then this is the end of the no parking zone here for heavy goods vehicles. Um, these are just normally see these in, in tunnels or something. Lane is open, lane is closed. And then this just indicates the speed limit and weight restriction depending on the lane so 50 kilometers left lane 50 kilometers the limit in the middle lane and then no heavy vehicles here 
in the outer uh, right hand lane. This sign here means straight ahead, go straight ahead, um, could be a one way street. Number two means turn left, as in turn left now. Number three, turn right, as in turn right now. Number four here, turn left up ahead. Number five, turn right up ahead. Number six is keep left. Number seven is keep right. And then number eight here means you can keep left or right. So the road kind of divides that way. Number one here means a cycle track. You're on a cycle track or cycle track up ahead. Number two is the end of the cycle track. Number three then is a cycleway. So these are normally part of the public road uh, for the exclusive use of cyclists. Number four is a shared uh, cycleway, cycle path and pedestrian area. Number five is also shared, but they're shared into different lanes. So there's a separate lane for cyclists and then a separate lane or area of the pathway for pedestrians. Number six then is cyclists only. And number seven then is pedestrians only. So now we're moving on to some bus and tram signs here. So number one here means it's an advance warning of a bus lane up ahead. So you're more likely to see this well in advance of the bus lane. It could be like 100 or 200 meters before it starts, okay? When you see these little dotted lines going diagonally. So it's warning you of a bus lane up ahead on the left and it can also be used by cyclists. This means there's a bus lane um, which can be used by cyclists as well on the left. This is an advance warning sign of a bus lane ahead on the right. And this is bus lane on the right. I think it's similar to this one, but uh, the white line is missing on this. Okay, so bus lane uh, on the right. Number five here is a contra flow bus lane. Okay, this is when the buses go contrary to the regular flow of traffic. So watch out for that. Um, a contra flow bus lane cannot be used by cyclists or taxis, buses only. Number six, and number seven are kind of more more so for pedestrians to look out for. So it's just saying look right. Um, buses could be coming from the right. And this is just telling you the direction of the bus lane. And number eight then is just an information plate um, to say that you're not allowed up here. Only buses are. Um, number nine, like here, buses only. Aka wine, uh, buses only. Uh, number 10, tram lane on the right up ahead. And number 11 then is again more so for pedestrians just to look right because trams could be emerging or coming from the right. And number 12 down here is a tram lane up ahead on the left. These are some roadworks signs. So number one is roadworks. Number two is flagman or manual traffic controls. Number three is traffic lights, temporary traffic lights, more so for the uh, duration of the roadworks. Number four, a series of bumps in the road up ahead. Number, number five, slippery surface. Number six, road narrows from the right. Number seven, road narrows from both sides. Number eight, two-way traffic. Number nine, start of obstruction or road divides basically. And number 10 here means the division is ended. So the, the, it's the end of the obstruction in the middle of the road for you and it's the start of it for the oncoming cars. Number one here then we have the left lane closed but the right lane is open. Um, number two, sorry down here, the left lane is closed but the two right lanes are open. Number three, the middle lane looks closed here, but the other two are open and available to use. Number four, the right-hand lane of three is closed. Number five indicates a two-lane crossover to the right and the left lane is closed. Number six indicates that the left lane is open, the middle lane is closed, and there's a one-lane traffic crossover to the right there. Number one and two here are the kind of signs that a flagman might hold up when he's manually controlling traffic. Uh, number one is go, number two is stop. Number three then is just warning you about roadworks up ahead. And then number, sorry, number four down here is a cul-de-sac or a dead end. Number five there, just telling you the road is closed. Uh, number six, that the crossing is not in use. Number seven is telling pedestrians to go right or keep right. And number eight then just says, look left. More roadwork signs here telling you number one of a detour. Number two is also a detour, as is number three. Number four is saying diverted traffic, so you're to go straight. And similarly here, go to the right to follow diverted traffic. And then this is telling you the end of the detour here, number six. Number seven then is a traffic crossover to the right. Number eight is a traffic crossover to the left. Number nine means no overtaking and probably for a certain distance underneath, there should be an information plate as well. Um, number 10 then is stop and go, as we already mentioned, just if, if in case of manual traffic controls, you might see the person holding these signs. Um, number 
this number 11, sorry, the like speed limit signs for 30 and 60. And these are electronic signs then that you might see in a tunnel or something like that. These are just motorway signs telling you that you've entered the motorway, these two are, uh, that you're on the M7 or the M50, whatever, and directional signs here and uh, distance signs there. So motorway signs are always going to be dark blue with white writing. More motorway signs here, again, directional signs here to exit the motorway. Um, these ones here, then number three. So this one here with the three little lines, next exit off the motorway is 300 meters. Next exit off the motorway is 200 meters. And this one here, next exit off the motorway is 100 meters. Number four down here is saying the motorway ends in one kilometer. Number five says motorway ends in 500 meters. And number six then means the end of the motorway. So motorway rules no longer apply. So number one here is just to say you're coming into Donegal town. Uh, number two is a cul-de-sac. So no true road here. These are just directional signs as well with uh, speed limits on them to say that you're going through a residential or a built up area. Um, similarly down here that you're near a school and that the speed limit is there. And these are just information plates for low bridges along with the height restrictions and um, the school ahead there. I think I mentioned that already. Now these ones down here at number five, these little symbols down here, these are going to be found on motorways, for example, and they are there as um, to give you directions to follow a certain alternative route in the case of an accident or in the case of some kind of emergency. These symbols are there to follow the designated alternative route and then eventually then you will get back on the motorway. These are just alternative routes then for high sided vehicles. So number one, uh, straight on for high sided vehicles and then left and right here. Similarly here, heavy goods vehicles to the right. This sign here, number six, is the sign for an industrial estate. Okay, number seven is for the ferry. Number eight is airport. Number nine, speed cameras. Uh, watch out for speed cameras ahead. Number five here, sorry I missed that, is the slow lane. So the slow lane in starts in 200 meters. So this is sometimes actually found if there's a, an uphill ahead and it's useful to have a slow lane then so that trucks and tractors and things can use the slow lane there. And these are just to do with uh, level crossings. Uh, Gamal means go slow. And then here we're directed to use the hard shoulder and then the end of the hard shoulder here, okay? So one is parking in 100 meters. There could be a lay-by as well. Similarly here, parking, car park available or a lay-by. Um, number three then indicates the direction for disabled parking. Um, so number four here is a disabled parking symbol um, for a ticket machine or parking machine. Number five, hospital ahead in 100 meters. Number six is the sign for a hospital. And then you just have directional signs here for uh, tourist facilities and for like a car park here. Um, pay and display down here and then you have more parking symbols here so for example number 13 here means no parking and then uh, number 14 here means parking during the time shown. Now here's a few signs that weren't in that book so I'm just going to add them in here at the end they're very important it's crucial you know these number one here advanced warning of a stop sign so this is a like a blank stop sign but it's sometimes placed 50, maybe 100 meters before a stop sign, just to give you advance warning that there is going to be a stop sign ahead. Maybe it's a concealed junction or something like that. The same here for number two, advanced warning of a yield sign, okay? So it looks like a yield sign, doesn't have the words yield on it. It's just meant to draw your attention to the fact that there will be a yield sign up ahead. So be prepared to stop and slow down for a junction up ahead. Number three, if you ever see these speed limit signs, it just means there's a change of speed limit and it's advisory or cautionary. So while it's not legally required that you do the speed limit, it is requested that you do so for general safety. And down here, number four, then we have a barrier board. So this is sometimes placed at the end of a footpath or the end of a traffic lane to signify that space is being lost for the pedestrians or for the driver. For example, a lane loss, or perhaps a road closure up ahead, okay? So that's a barrier board there, number four. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to thumbs up, and I'll be back soon with another one. Email me, daintai at gmail.com if you have any questions, or if you'd like me to analyze your driving test report sheet. I'll be back soon with another video. Until then, safe travels, slongafall.